This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. We believe a home reflects what matters most. Let us design what matters most to you. You are listening to Good Living by Design, where beautiful and well-decorated spaces are created, making you love the space you're in. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Good Living by Design. I'm Lenore Gonzalez, your host and owner of DNY Design Group. We believe that a home reflects what matters most, so we design what matters most to you. We create beautiful, well-decorated rooms that will make you love the space you're in. I am so excited to be here with you and can't wait to share design tips, ideas, and stories and provide inspiration to get those decorating juices flowing. So this is our first podcast, and for our first podcast, we'll talk about home shaming. You've heard about body shaming, so you might already know intuitively what home shaming means because you may have felt it one way or another. After seeing thousands of photos of perfect homes and spaces on social media and TV, There's Pinterest, there's House.com, there's HGTV, and maybe even in your own neighborhood, you may have felt ashamed and less than when looking around your home and seeing not only undecorated and unorganized spaces, but messes as well. So you may ask yourself, why do people call a decorator or designer? People call a designer or decorator for a number of reasons. And believe it or not, we get a lot of calls because homeowners have a secret shame. Yes, you guessed it. Homeowners are embarrassed by their houses. Millions of Americans avoid inviting people into their homes because they are embarrassed about the state of their homes. Are you in the same boat? Have you ever felt like this before? A survey done revealed that 61% of Americans are embarrassed by their houses and don't extend invitations to friends and family because of their home shame. So why don't we love our homes? Some of us feel that maybe our house is too small or maybe too cheap. We may have outdated or stained and dirty carpeting. So we may have started a DIY project that has been incomplete and unfinished for years. So what about those imperfect color scheme, those mismatched furnishings and badly decorated rooms? because we don't have time, energy, and know-how to decorate. We would love to hire a professional decorator to help, but don't have the budget right now to do so. All these are valid reasons why we feel embarrassed of our homes. So are we just being ungrateful? Shouldn't we be thankful that we have a roof above our heads? Is it just about having a magazine-worthy home? Is it just about having expensive furnishings or worrying that someone will like your style? Or is it really about the piles of clutter that need to be cleaned and organized? What about the lack of vision that paralyzes you to move forward, making your home beautiful and presentable? Are this really the issues why we don't love the space we're in? Or is it really because we have not created a home that makes you smile when you walk in the door? People say you are your home. People perceive your home the way they perceive you. If your home is classy, then people think you're classy. But try having a messy house and the first thing people would think is, oh wow, she's messy. Our home reflects on us. If we're not happy with our home, then we're embarrassed to show others. Nobody wants to be embarrassed. If the inside of your home is not a reflection of you and what makes you happy, then your home will never be the home you love. Period. End of story. So what can we do to start to love our home and be happy and proud to show it off? So first thing we tell people to do is figure out your problem. Why don't you love your home? Is it too cramped? Is it outdated? Is it dark? Is it messy? How do you feel when you walk into your home? Are you stressed, relaxed, calm, inspired? What is the biggest problem going to cost you to take care of your problem and make repairs? What is the one thing that you can do right now that will get you closer to loving your home? These are all the questions that you need to ask yourself. Figure out your problem. Then, when you know what your problem is, figure out what you're willing to do. Are you willing to spend the time to work on your house? Are you willing to spend the money to get things done? 
Are you willing to purge and get rid of stuff? Or are you willing to take the risk and not be scared to make decisions, design decisions, and get started? Once you know what your problem is and what you're willing to do, the next thing is to create a plan. Figure out what you need in order to fix and improve your situation. Don't have time? Then schedule 30 minutes a day to work on your home project. Don't have the budget? Figure a way to repurpose things you already have in your home. Find reasonable items on sale. Do a lot on your own by watching tutorials on YouTube or getting inspiration from Pinterest and online sites. If you don't know where to start, if you don't have the design knowledge to start tackling decorating in your home, call and hire a professional to guide you and get the projects done. We're here to help. If you're overwhelmed, we always say start one room, one project at a time. So there's really no excuse to not enjoy and love your home. When you love your space, you're most likely to be proud to show it off. Homeowners usually have ideas about how to make their house an ideal home. But the lack of time, money, and basic decorating skills can mean that homeowners struggle to see all or even any of their plans through. Sometimes all it takes are a few minor changes here and there. Start small with a DIY project that you can actually enjoy with simple tools that you are confident using and focus one room at a time. You don't have to tackle everything at once. The pride you get from one successful project will help you confidently go to the next one. Again, remember, find your project, figure out your problem. What are you willing to do? Create a plan. This can help you get started. Remember, you don't have to start big. You just need to start. And to help you find yourself to be on your way to being proud of your home and loving the space you're in, go to goodlivingbydesignshow.com to get your free report on the 15 ways to reinvent your home. Thank you for joining me today. Join me again next week and we'll show you how not to be overwhelmed when working on a decorating project. I'm Lenore Gonzalez. And thank you for listening to Good Living by Design. This is the podcastfactory.com.